What I will show you in this video is an app to process astro pictures. I found this today. It's crazy and I wanted to bring to you as soon as possible. So also here, no green screen. I just want to publish that as soon as possible and maybe I do later on a follow-up about it. More about that right after the intro. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So let's start with the basics. The app is called Astro Edit. It costs $3 and it's only available for iOS, iPad OS, so no Droid. Its intent is that you can edit pictures you shoot with your Sea Star, with your Dwarf, on the go. So pictures that were outputted by your smartphones. But I'm sure it would work also with any other Astro picture. It just doesn't do any stacking. So you have to have a stacked picture in non-linear stage, as far as I understand it. So I have here, for example, this rather horrible picture I shot from the Horsey Nebula. It's just about an hour integration time, yeah, 79 minutes. So really not that much, very noisy, but it's a very good example. And by the way, I have recorded already a workflow for PixInsight. But when I was doing it with PixInsight, I also thought, isn't that actually just a little bit, you know, overboard? Given that the pictures are anyway not that great quality, should we use such an extensive, time-consuming workflow? And then today I saw that. And it really is the answer, kind of, to this question. And when I show you how it works, the crazy part is that from a UI, it's so much more elegant than Pix Inside. It's obviously, it's much less powerful, but just the way to edit, if Pix Inside would only be 10% as user-friendly as this tool, that would be already cool. And by the way, I tried it on my iPad worked like a charm. Now this is actually my Mac Mini emulating iOS. So up here we simply have, you can load a picture, you can crop it, you can save it at the end and you had undo and redo. That's what we have on top. On the bottom here we have down here tweak. So these are the basic things you can do then curve, like um, a regular curve tool, then wavelet, that's the sharpening, and then we have various AI tools. And we go from left to right. So at the moment, at the default, at the beginning, we're in the tweak setting, exposure. So always down here, I have this slider. If I go to the left, it gets darker. If I go to the right, it gets brighter. So we just do approximately what we feel is cool. Let's just leave it about. Now we go to saturate. So we can try the same. And you see what I mean? It immediately, whatever I do, it always shows it. It doesn't need a lot of processing time, whatever. It just shows nicely what I'm doing. Temperature. So we obviously get warmer, colder. I can do it a little tiny bit warmer than it was, but not much. Tint, actually here I get more into the red, which is good. I get rid of the green and I get more an intensive red. And you, I would leave that where it is because otherwise, well, SHO. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, so let's get where it gets more interested. Curve, by the way, you see always here the histogram. It's also very nice. So the curve works like that, that you have five points throughout the curve. This is obviously the black. So we can already start here. When we move this here to the right, it gets darker. That's good. We go to point two. We can also here get it a little bit darker. Point three. 
Now we have to be careful, but also a little tiny bit darker. Now with 0.4, we go in the opposite direction. We get here the red brighter and the 0.6, I would actually leave where it is because if you go in, you see here that it starts to burn the whole thing out. That looks really ugly. So just leave that on top. Okay. If you look on what we already did, it's a huge difference already. With that, we go to wavelet and the wavelet we go from the small structures, so stars and so on, to the very large structures like the whole nebula. Here with small, if we actually go here to the left, we can already do a little bit like a pseudo denoising. Medium, it also gets noisier, so we also put it rather to the left here. A little bit additional denoising. Now, starting with large, we can actually sharpen the picture by going tiny little bit to the right. And that gets even more interesting in the XL part. As you can see, we can really bring the structures out. Here we have to be careful because of the stars. Okay. And with that, we come to AI and that's even cooler. So here we have a denoise tool, an AI denoise tool. And if I move that over, you see life. Where in pink scenes I can I see denoising life? And here I just go over and I see the noise disappear. Isn't that cool? So obviously we can really blur it down. That's not the idea. But I think around here, that's good. Next thing comes star. And what we do here, we can do star reduction or even star removal. So if I go all the way to the right, the stars are almost gone. And I can decide how much I still want to have the stars in there. Also that life without any delay. Then we come to gradient removal, which unfortunately doesn't work yet. Because if I try to remove gradient, what I will remove is mostly the nebulosity. You see that that's not the intent at all. So perhaps I don't know if it's a star cluster or whatever that will actually work. But with nebulosity at the moment, don't touch it. And then satellite, as you know, the sea star keeps the satellite streaks in there. So here we could actually remove that. In these pictures, I did not have one. So no problem. So let's look again where we came from and where we ended up with. Now, the only criticism that I have is that it is now a little bit blurry. So let's go back to Wavelet and see if we can still do something. Let's start again again with the small. And they also say that this is actually an iterative process. So it's no shame to go back now and see if we can get it a little bit sharper. Okay, and I think now it looks a little bit sharper. Let's look again. We come from here. We come to here. That looks really good. And if you want to save it, you just click on this here and it will save it right into your photo app. So bottom line, it is definitely not a high-end tool like PixInsight, but if you're on the road, you have your sea star or your dwarf with you and you want to just beautify the pictures a little bit that you can post it right on Instagram or whatever. This is really an amazing tool and for $3, Wow, kudos to whoever coded that. And I guess this is the first version also. So if they, can, if they can get the gradient removal and everything a little bit better, this will be really an amazing tool. So if you have an iOS device, if you have the need for something like that, by all means, just buy it. So that was it for today. I wish you all a happy new year and for sure, more clear sky than this year. See you next time.